Yeah, and I think I, I kind of want to know why. I mean, I, I think money itself is, is another belief system. It's something that we've taken without question and just accepted as truth without looking into it more thoroughly. And uh, there's nothing wrong with it as a tool for no. human beings to interact with each other with. But still, it's only a belief system that gives it any value. The true value is in human beings. Mm -hmm. it, human right. beings' infinite potential is what the value is. Um, that's where value is derived, where it, where it is held, where it is stored, is in human beings. Now, right. if we decide to interact and trade with different seashells or gold or coconuts, you know, which would be very inconvenient, then that's all fine. But uh, you know, you take the predatory aspects out of that trade, and there there's nothing wrong with it. But you still have to see it as a belief system. You know, I had this conversation with a few friends the other day, and when I first heard this th this said this way too, it was like. A belief system like what do you mean you know well there's no intrinsic value in paper mm. for sure um, unless you can eat it uh, maybe there's some papers out there you could you can eat and make into clothes and stuff like that mm -hmm. but but gold itself um, there's no intrinsic value as in if you're the ever you know the worst STFH shit hit the fan right, right. scenario happens um, can you bathe and, and can you eat right, gold? Exactly. Can you sh yeah. can you shelter yourself with it? <laughs> Maybe if you had a whole lot of it, can you drink it? Right. Can you breathe it? Right. <laughs> Does it help you raise children? Well, you know if you can use it to trade other things, but intrinsically, right. in inherently, it's not valuable. Exactly. It, it, it can transport wealth, and people have you know speculated that it's because it can last under water for millions of years in the ocean and you pull it up and it's just like the the day that it went down mm. well that that's a good value and and today we use it in electronics gold gets used mm. on motherboards to mm -hmm. to be um um used in the technology industry so it's intrinsically valuable there maybe but you still can't eat it still can't drink it still can't use it to really live with the basic things you need so gold is still a belief system precious metals still just our belief that makes it valuable in reality because we are the ones that are valuable but at that same time I have no problem with with using paper or using gold to trade with other people um, but it's the predatory aspect of the Federal Reserve that or any banking system which seeks to you know create something from nothing and then charge massive amounts of interest and you know, manipulate wars and loan money to governments to go to war that they themselves manipulated. That's obviously all things that I don't agree with. So, yeah, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great distinction, and that's one that we as volunteers have to frequently make with status, which is um, it's uh, from the, uh, the Frederick Bastiat uh, quote from the 19th century: um, "When when we object to something being done by the state, socialists believe that we object to it being done at all. <laughs> right? right? So if, so as, as, and, and his, um, his example is, you know, if we object, object to grain being subsidized by the state, that then they conclude that we object to people eating <laughs> grain. <laughs> right. Right? So It's the same with when you advocate for no state. People think you're advocating for no rules, but it's not yeah. no rules. It's no rulers. There are still rules. Right. And, you know, Know, and those rules are the natural law. That the rules are the laws that govern human behavior that are existent here in this reality, and we can come to understand those things. And I'm not, you know, um, I don't know if you're like into natural law or if you feel like there's some uh, construct of laws that govern human morality, um, but you know, I see it that way. And we're not advocating for no rules. Mm -hmm. It's no rulers, and that's a, bi a big one. And it, for anarchists, you might be, yeah, of course. Well, not the status. When you start talking no rulers, they picture in their head just yeah. fireballs <laughs> flying across the sky and murderers <laughs> driving off with your wife on a motorcycle. And, you know what I mean? Like, and, and you're like, yeah, that's an excellent way to raise my kids. Exactly. You're right. <laughs> but there are still rules. and, and the Exactly. Human, to be truly free, they will learn those rules and they will live by them because there's the law of freedom in in the in a set of laws known as natural law, and it goes like this: that the more moral that a human species is, or the more moral we are in the aggregate, the more freedom we will ultimately experience. Because 
you know, the more you're, we're taking away someone's natural rights from them, the more that we're impeding on their right to be without being harmed. If we're all doing that, that's going to create a whole system of slavery. But if we all live according to the non-aggression principle, the principle of self-ownership, try to raise our kids peacefully, try to have uh, peaceful interactions with other human beings, that will ultimately result in much more freedom because of this natural law. Because when you uh, live that way in the vast overwhelming majority of people, freedom will ultimately continue to grow and grow and grow. Because the more moral a society is, it's it's directly linked to how free a society is. Exactly. Beautifully said. You know, um, it's too much fun talking with another volunteer, Tyler. Maybe we can talk for hours. <laughs> yeah. Let me, let me, I do, I do want to fit in that one of the other things you had me prepare here with some books, unless you had something else that I no, wanted okay. to go into. I want to kind of yeah. reference a few things here. Sure, sure. Go ahead. That's cool. I won't go on through my, I, I did make a list, so sure. just in case I left something out, but then when you make a list, you always leave something out. <laughs> but one, <laughs> one book, just to kind of get people's attention drawn to it, if they haven't heard of it, is The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke. And it's a PDF you can find out there online. You, you probably won't be able to find a physical copy until somebody picks up the task of, of publishing this again and getting it back out there. But I'd like to read a little quote from that book actually here that I had written down. And, and when he's talking about evil here, he's talking about anything that opposes that infinite worth of the human being. So anything that takes away from that value. Hmm is what he's defining as evil. So it's not some Christian conjuring that you should have up in your head about a satanic mm. evil thing. He's talking about freedom is freedom. Anything that opposes that is evil. Mm. And here he says, To understand how evil controls people, it is necessary to understand the difference between principle and law. A principle is a truth that creates freedom, and a law is a lie that creates slavery. Principles describe reality. They are knowledge that help you make use of our world. Because of your intelligence, you recognize principle in everything you do. Every true thing you learn is a principle. The movement of your hands, which food tastes good, mathematics, and empathy for a friend are all based on principle. Laws are artificial ideas created by evil men to restrict the thinking and understanding of people. Laws mask themselves in authority so that they can impersonate principle. When people mistake truth for the ideas of authority, their abilities and wisdom are, dim are diminished. This is the purpose of law. Law must be enforced because there is no truth in it. A law destroys freedom because it is a lie. A principle, however, creates freedom because it is knowledge. That which destroys freedom is evil. And that's from the, the book The End of All Evil by Jeremy Locke, which, which really just kind of, it was one of the, the great books that I read 